In my previous Shin Godzilla Easter Eggs references Things Missed and More video, I briefly mentioned the similarities among the original Godzilla, Return of Godzilla, and Shin Godzilla. This made me think that if these three movies are very similar in their own ways, why not compare them some more? This has been going through my head for quite a while, and I believe it's time to do so. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Godzilla vs. Return of Godzilla vs. Shin Godzilla. An analysis of the holy trinity of the Godzilla franchise. We all know the story here. It all starts with a vessel of some sort at sea that gets attacked. The incident is being investigated as it is revealed that it is the cause of a giant monster named Godzilla. Immune to the firepower of Japan's military, Godzilla goes on a rampage through Japan and the fate of the nation rests upon the actions of this radioactive behemoth and the people who protect the nation. It's a tale that will last through the ages, but let's dive deeper into each one of these films. In the original Godzilla, there has been a couple of incidents where boats at sea would get destroyed due to a radioactive flash of light. An investigation is held at a nearby island by the name of Odo Island in which the natives say it is the work of a monster named Godzilla. Godzilla is then found on the island, and Japan's worst fear comes to life as the beast begins terrorizing Tokyo. The original Godzilla does a great job putting you in the perspective of an ordinary citizen who is aware of the horrors of unchecked nuclear devastation nine years prior, or maybe already experienced it. The tone of this film is the darkest of the franchise, and has not been matched ever since. As for the characters, we view them as ordinary people who aren't prepared for what is to come. You have Hideo Ogata, a sailor for the Japanese Coast Guard, played by Akira Takarada. Emiko Yamane, a childhood friend of Dr. Daisuke Serizawa and Ogata's love interest, played by Momoko Kochi. Dr. Daisuke Serizawa, the creator of the Oxygen Destroyer, played by Akihiko Hirata. And Kyohei Yamane, Emiko's father and a paleontologist who once Godzilla studied, played by Takashi Shimura. The character death is perfect for this kind of film, though the love triangle among Ogata, Emiko, and Sarazawa may not be interesting to some. As for Godzilla, he is without a doubt downright terrifying, despite looking a little weird in some shots. And it's not just the monster himself. The cinematography, the miniatures, and the frame rate manipulation are handled very well. They play key parts in this movie to give the illusion that Godzilla is real. It even scared the people who were watching it in Toho Theater. And the score from Akira Fukubi is phenomenal, and really creates a very grim tone for this film. This was during a time where monster movies like Dracula and Frankenstein weren't all that scary anymore, because something scarier happened in the real world, and we needed a monster that embodied such a horror, which I'll go more into later. In the end, the original Godzilla is a cinematic masterpiece. Now it seems Tokyo has no defense. In Return of Godzilla, a vessel gets attacked by a large creature. A reporter finds one of the survivors of the attack and identifies the creature as Godzilla, which then raises the stakes as the monster rises from Tokyo Bay and goes on a rampage. Return of Godzilla is definitely a product of its time. This was during the era where action science fiction was in its prime, and Return of Godzilla fits in very well. And let's not forget that this was during the Cold War, so themes that relate to the use of nuclear weapons are mentioned. Throughout a good chunk of the film, Japan is caught in the middle of the feud among the United States and the Soviet Union as Godzilla was attacking Soviet submarines, which led them to believe that America was attacking them. But enough about politics, we're here to see the action, right? While it's not your typical Schwarzenegger and Stallone type, it goes well for this type of movie, especially when Godzilla faces laser tanks and the Super X, and it is quite a spectacle to see him tear his way through Japan. As for the characters, you have Goro Maki, not that one, not that one, not that one either, a reporter played by Kentanaka, Hiroshi Okamura, a survivor of the Godzilla attack on the Yahada Maru, played by Shin Takuma, Professor Hayashida, who conducts a plan to lure Godzilla into a volcano using magnetic waves and explosives, played by Yosuke Natsuki, and Naoko Okamura, Hiroshi's sister and Goro's love interest, played by Yasuko Sawaguchi. 
The characters are part of the action this time around. Again, they may not be the typical Schwarzenegger and Stallone action heroes, but they are good for this film. Just the fact that these are just ordinary people makes something like this more grounded in reality. Much like the original, there is a variety of practical Godzilla effects. While the original had a puppet and a suit, Return of Godzilla goes for the extra mile, which includes a suit, the famous Saibot Godzilla, and a life-sized Godzilla foot. So the effects have gotten better since the original. Return of Godzilla is near perfect. It amps up all the elements from the original. I would say it's my favorite in the entire franchise, but it's not as impressive nor as powerful as the original. Like to see a city folks in the bright lights, Godzilla? In Shin Godzilla, an explosion occurs at Tokyo Bay. Reports say it was due to volcanic activity, but one member of the Japanese government dares to believe that it is a large creature. That ends up being true as it sets foot on Japan and starts tearing its way through as it evolves into the monster we know as Godzilla. Shin Godzilla is the most political of not only these films, but the entire series as well. I know there are people who aren't very fond of the human scenes, but it's actually one of the biggest strengths in this film, and are arguably the best human characters in the entire series. You have Deputy Chief Cabinet Secretary, Deputy Director, Cabinet Minister of State for Special Missions, and Giant Unidentified Creature, Unified Response Task Force, HQ, Baru Chief, Jesus, how many things is this guy? Rando Yagachi, who also conducts the Yagachi Plan and Operation Yashiori to stop Godzilla, played by Hiroki Hasegawa. Aid to the Prime Minister and National Security Officer Hideki Akasaka, played by Yutaka Takenuchi, and Special Presidential Envoy Kayoko Ann Patterson, played by Satomi Ishihara. Yes, the human scenes do drag at times, especially during the second half before the finale, but other than that, they are very engaging. The acting is incredible, and not once did I ever find them not interesting, but that's just me. The film jabs at how flawed a democracy can be, especially in a country like Japan. This is a major part of the film. Caution must be exercised in any situation that must be examined very carefully before making a decision, whether it is to not fire at Godzilla because a civilian is close by, or conduct a meeting for every time Godzilla does something. Eventually, other nations get involved, especially America, in which American stealth bombers anger Godzilla after attacking him, which did not have a pleasant result, and said nation gives Japan the option to allow them to drop a thermonuclear bomb onto Tokyo in order to kill Godzilla. This brings up an important theme in the film, which I'll get into later. The action is definitely the cherry on the sundae. The icing on the cake. The military unleashed all firepower on a nearly indestructible monster only to find out it does next to nothing. The atomic breath scene is absolutely incredible and definitely worth the price of admission and Operation Yashiori is just as cool. The music plays an important part of this film too, despite the fact that it reuses tracks from previous Godzilla films as well as Neon Genesis Evangelion, which are used perfectly by the way. The score composed by Shiro Sugisu is exactly what you would want to hear in a film about a god of destruction who has come to doom us all. Now onto Godzilla. This Godzilla is very unique among the previous versions of the character. He is the largest film version of Godzilla by far, has more tricks up his sleeve, such as emitting photon beams from his back and tail, and definitely looks terrifying. And this is Toho's first computer-generated Godzilla. This may sound like a bad thing, but the CGI was pretty convincing, tricking us into thinking it was an actor in a suit, for the most part. You know that Godzilla vs. Evangelion marketing campaign? That was not only made to promote the film because of Hideaki Anno's involvement, but also because a good chunk of the budget was spent on unused practical effects most notably the Godzilla animatron. Thankfully, the film does retain its tradition of using miniatures for close-ups. In fact, did you know that these miniatures were shot using an iPhone 6? Speaking of Hideaki Anno, his essence is all over this film. If you've seen Neon Genesis Evangelion, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Shin Godzilla may not be a perfect film, but it is a very important one. Not as powerful as the original, but I'd still recommend watching it. That's all of them. 
but before I give my final thoughts, I want to discuss something that is very important. Godzilla is not just about his crazy superpowers. It's not about the cities he destroys or the monsters he face. Godzilla is an idea. Godzilla is a character who rose from the ashes of a hope-deprived country who had first experienced the horrors of nuclear fallout at the end of World War II. Godzilla was made to embody such a terror. Tamayuki Tanaka, Ishio Honda, Eiji Tsuburaya, and Akira Fukubi did everything to make Godzilla what he is today. A metaphor of an atomic apocalypse. These three films even take influence from the events of your time and apply to the character. Godzilla in the original was inspired by the bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, as well as the nuclear tests in the Pacific Ocean, especially Castle Bravo, which appeared in 1954 and heavily influenced the beginning of the film. Return of Godzilla takes inspiration from the Cold War and Japan not wanting to be part of the conflict Shin Godzilla takes inspiration from not only Hiroshima and Nagasaki, it also takes influence from the 311 tsunami earthquake and nuclear power plant leak, which was said to be the worst radioactive disaster since Chernobyl. I still remember the first time I ever watched the original Godzilla film. I've been a fan of the series since I was 4 years old and I always saw the movie as, oh, Godzilla fights a bad guy and he wins, or Godzilla destroys a building, and etc. I did not watch the 1954 classic until I was 8, and since then, my view of Godzilla has completely changed. Whenever you see someone say that Godzilla's just a dumb movie about a monster who destroys cities and fights monsters, feel free to remind them of what he represents. Anyway, now for the ranking. At number 3 is Shin Godzilla. Despite its great characters, music, action sequences, and themes, this is not a film for everyone, since it's a very political film. It may not be perfect, but it is one of the best in the series. Number 2 is Return of Godzilla. It's a product of its time, but there are times where you can just never beat the original. Thus, I put the original Godzilla film at number 1. There has never been a film as impressive or as powerful since the first Godzilla movie. And it's all because of the message it evokes. It has been over 60 years and it has barely been matched. Absolutely everything about this film is phenomenal. Thus the original Godzilla from 1954 is a cinematic masterpiece making it one of the greatest films of all time. If anyone is looking into becoming interested in the Godzilla franchise and wanting to be a fan, this is the way to start. But what it really comes down to is preference. There's always going to be a Godzilla for every generation, and everyone has their own interpretation of what the monster is to them and how they define him. Whether he's a force of nature, a superhero, or the symbol of nuclear destruction, this is what makes Godzilla so popular. His story can be told in any way, and he can still be recognizable in some form, and it can spark new perspectives on the character, and it will work and not ruin them, even if it's not well received. I would say that these are the three best Godzilla films ever made, because as time goes on, the message Godzilla brings to us becomes more and more relevant. Godzilla is the definition of timeless. Ladies and gentlemen, that is it for this video. Be sure to rate, comment, subscribe, share this video with your friends. Just do whatever to keep this channel strong. Check out some of my other videos as well. Comment which Godzilla film is your favorite. I mean, it doesn't have to be out of these three. And I will see you guys later.